Welcome to the Create with Katrina Julia show by Fit Life Creation, where we talk all the things on wellness, faith, marketing, business, and travel to create a life and business you love. I've been there, friend. I've walked from fear to faith, self-hate to love, corporate to calling, and bondage to freedom along with transformation in every area of my life. I'm right here with you, walking along on my own path to creating. So tune in so that you learn how to create a life and business you love, hands on. Let's create it. Create it like a boss anywhere and everywhere in the world. For women creators and CEOs who crave creating community and cash to create it like a boss, we are talking about cations, aka fit cations, content cations, retreats, and co living around the world. If you head on over to the link in bio and and or fitlifecreation.com backslash retreats, you can find recaps of our Cuba retreats and an incredible video done by Weekend Voyagers, a recap about the Cuba retreat, top seven global destinations, creating and launching retreats like a boss, 10xing social media, five steps to launch to get a feel for some of the ways we create it around the world. As of this recording, we have destinations coming up in 2023 through 2024 with Europe, with Greece, with Barcelona, with the United States, with Los Angeles, California, with Florida, and more coming soon, like Bali, like Africa, like Atlanta, and more into 2024. For. So what are you waiting for? It is time to create it anywhere and everywhere in the world. Oh my goodness. Thank you so, so, so much. I just saw on our analytics yesterday, uh, October 26th, we, I, we, I, Spotify, iTunes, all the things reached a record high in downloads and listens for the day of already over 300 and the day is not over yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep it up. Share the link to the show episode you listen to. Tag me on social at Katrina Julia Fit, at Fit Life Creation. Do a post, do a reel, do a story on your takeaway and what you did to create it. And I will shout you out and you will be entered in to a giveaway to win a spot for the month in the Create It Monthly Mastermind, which you absolutely want to check out to create it. If you love my binge worthy content, you love to create it like a boss and have tips, tools, and tech to create it. So what is today's show? It is all about exploring real estate in Mexico in the Yucatan Peninsula. So if you are thinking, oh my goodness, Katrina, you don't have enough on your plate. Now you're exploring real estate. Welcome to my world. One of my things for 2023 and beyond is to share more behind the scenes, be more transparent on how I choose to invest my time and share more stories on Instagram, more TikToks. I'm creating a lot more with AI with videos and um, with voiceovers even. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know. So just get ready because just like I'm sharing a 90 day to 2024 challenge on my Instagram and on all the channels, I'm challenging myself exponentially to rise. So let's get back to real estate. I love casting vision and creating a limitless global girl life all around the world. 
I have loved to imagine and create since I was a little girl. Since 2015, I increased my focus on vision. And if you haven't listened to the episode on 2023 vision a year ahead and or read the vision series on the blog, I highly recommend you do. And of course, it will be coming up for 2024, a vision, uh, 2024 vision a year ahead. Um, I increased, since 2015, I increased my focus on vision and action every single year, and it continues to expand and to evolve. And owning, investing, and or building homes and retreat centers in Atlanta, Florida, California, and or Central America has been on my 100 things to do before you die list regularly. And I, what's interesting is you guys, the more you increase alignment, the more you increase intention, and the more you create space by cutting out things from your life that don't serve you, you literally make the time for things that do. And that's literally what happened with this. So prior to my travels to Playa del Carmen in 2023, I did know that I wanted to travel to Merida, Mexico. On my last episode, I talked about how Merida was on my list since 2021. So while I planned to visit Merida, I did not plan on having a real estate experience in Merida. However, while exploring Airbnb experiences online in Merida, side note, did you know that Airbnb has experiences? Likely no. I've told them for years when I was a community manager in Atlanta that nine out of 10 people I ask online or in real life, they don't know. And I encourage them to do better marketing. Side note, I will have an upcoming episode and blog post on why I, an episode on my YouTube channel, why I have a love and hate relationship with Airbnb in 2023, Uh, because it's changed in several, several different ways. And some have stayed the same that I love and some that I don't love, but that's a whole nother topic. So while exploring Airbnb experiences in Merida, I discovered an Airbnb experience for a real estate course in Mexico with Neil. Insert, oh my God, emoji, because I have used Airbnb experiences for years across the world and I have never seen a real estate course listed. So I immediately took it in and received it as an oh yes, I am and we are doing this. And I reached out immediately via the Airbnb messenger on Airbnb experiences to contact the host with a clear intention to explore potential homes for me, learn about real estate in Mexico and or uh, retreat centers and being open to possibilities with content creation, ownership and investment in pre-construction colonial and rural properties, think cenotes like Hacienda Campepen that have cenotes on site. More about that in a bit. This is a vision for me by 2029 or sooner. And I ended up traveling to Merida about a month later after I first reached out to Neil for the real estate course. And after my first week in Merida with getting some key projects done, with finishing up content, from Playa, clearing up my camera and creating the space, I reached out to Neil to schedule my real estate course. I am so glad I did. In two hours, I had a great time with Neil and learned so much about navigating real estate in Mexico. So while some of the ways that I learned were no surprise, several of them were. So the Airbnb experience and the real estate course in the Yucatan with over a hundred five-star reviews on the real estate course in the Yucatan, investing two hours and about 30 US dollars in 2023 with Neil during my travel to Merida was a no brainer. Immediately when I saw the experience, the bio and the reviews. So what Neil shares on Airbnb about himself is he was a realtor in Portland, Oregon for seven plus years. He enjoys helping people navigate the complexity of finding the the 
best property for their needs. Then he shares, I am now living in Merida. My love for this vibrant city with its distinct culture inspires me to explore and learn about the white city. Merida is thriving and has much to offer with its many neighborhoods. And what he shares about the experience, hashtag not sponsored yet. Hashtag if you have a real estate property and you are wanting to co-create with creators on a content creation aspect, on social media management, global retreats at your site, and or as a fractional CMO, definitely, definitely reach out. You'll hear more about that later on. And so what he shares is my goal with this experience is to help people that are interested in real estate in Merida and the Yucatan Beach to get more information regarding the neighborhoods in Merida or along the Yucatan Gulf coast. My intent is to help people acquire the knowledge and tools to either rent or buy property in the Yucatan. We will meet at my office in Centro, a few blocks from Paseo de Montejo. We will discuss your particular needs and wants and talk about the standard operating procedures that are expected here in the Yucatan in regards to real estate. We will address capital gains as well as the how important it is to have a great lawyer and their role in a successful real estate transaction. If there is time, we will then do computer searches to help gain understanding of value and what makes a property unique. And if it's a great fit for you and your needs, we will talk about trends and standard real estate practices and how they affect foreigners looking to live in Merida. This experience will last about two hours. The experience may also be done through Zoom. If people would prefer, just send a message and we'll arrange it. If you are even thinking about real estate in a foreign market in Mexico, I highly recommend adding the Airbnb experience to your next trip to Mexico. Note, in case you missed it, Neil can do the experiences virtually too. Right from the start, I felt like the vibe was aligned with Neil, even on Airbnb chat email. And my intent in sharing you know, this show the blog post, the video on my YouTube channel is to, you know, increase behind the scenes on, you know, things that I'm co-creating and doing. Also, for those of you that may be interested in exploring real estate in Mexico as well, and to share the knowledge and the ins and outs on what I explored, and of course, to potentially align opportunities in real estate as well as I increase my knowledge and experience in this area too. So when I arrived at White City Properties near Paseo Montejo, I felt like seeing an old friend again who is super knowledgeable about real estate in Mexico. We started off exploring Neil's background in real estate in Oregon and in general, like personally on many things. And he has an incredibly high vibe and is super personable. And then also his background and experiences now in and around Merida, Mexico for the last five years and how he started helping out a friend that wanted to acquire a nearby beach property in Mexico years ago. We then walked through Neil's vast experiences in the process of navigating real estate in Mexico for foreigners. The experience includes listings of real estate properties that may match what you're looking for within a week or so of your course, or like he shared in his overview during the experience, if there is time. In my case, after we concluded our two-hour workshop, Neil even offered to show me some properties the next day, which was brilliant because I was leaving in two days. We ended up seeing two properties the next day, and there's even more value that he gave, which I'll share in just a bit. So keep listening because it is just getting good. And I also want to shout out Alyssa with at my life as a movie on sharing her experiences and wisdom on Instagram and on her blog with um, her experiences with real estate in Mexico alongside pre-construction in Tulum, Mexico as well, because many of the things I learned with her reading her blog post earlier this year and her Instagram posts also aligned and reinforced what I learned with Neil. And then also walking through it on my own was um, amazing and I loved it. And then also seeing how her pre-construction, like what happened with her down payment, what happened with her pre-construction in Tulum. And then also if you haven't yet listen to my extensive episodes on Tulum. I lived in Tulum for three months in 2021 and stayed there in a jungle cabana. And I have a top 10 guide, best cenotes, and a lot more too. 
So types of real estate. As a foreigner who may be buying or investing in real estate in Mexico, there may be several things to consider. At the same time, I knew I wanted to have an intention going into the real estate course and be open to what comes to me and the timing. So practicing detachment um, alongside the vision and the intention and the aligned action. The property types that interest me currently, which may change, Include pre-construction in and near Tulum or Bacalar, Mexico. There was an incredible article pre-pandemic that was written that is Bacalar, the next Tulum. And I spent about a month there in 2021 as well. And I absolutely adore it. Uh, two, colonial homes in and near Merida, Mexico for the vibe, for content creation, for potential retreat homes. And then three, rural properties with the cenotes for potentially adventure, for potentially commercializing the cenote and more. Prior to experiencing an online or in-person experience, I recommend you narrow down what you're interested in and what type of buyer or investor you are. Uh, Merida, if you didn't know, is named the safest city in Mexico for years. And I talk about that on my last episode on top 10 things to do in Merida, as well as on my blog post and my top 10 travel guides. Real estate in Mexico. So real estate as a whole, I've attended real estate investment seminars in Atlanta, including in 2023 on wholesaling, commercial, and investment opportunities. Um, when I got my CPA license, I contemplated at that time to get my CPA and or my real estate license. And recently I've thought about potentially, not now, not now. So let me just put that in. Maybe within the next seven years or less, just depending on things and timing, I've still explored or navigated or thought about diving in deeper with real estate as a broker or different things like that. Um, so that's still a potential potentiality, however you say it. I almost bought a townhome in Houston working closely with a realtor, Lerma. She is awesome prior to moving to Atlanta, Georgia in 2010. So as a result, I share all that to say I was not going completely green into the real estate course. At the same time, I was open and humble and knew there was a lot of things I would likely not know about navigating real estate in the market in Mexico. I did Google and research a couple of things, but I trusted that Neil would walk me through uh, several things. And so I waited in anticipation and definitely he over delivered. And and I learned a ton from the real estate course in Yucatan with Neil via White City Properties and Airbnb experiences. So here's a couple of things I learned um, for you to get a glimpse. And then I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Limitless Global Girl and um, search. You'll see under the Married Up playlist uh, within the next, depending on when you're listening to this within the next, uh, two to three days, cause I haven't finished the video yet. Um, so just disclaimer, if you don't see it yet, and then also in whenever I'm done with it, it will be linked in the blog post and the blog post will be live and I'll update the show notes. If you don't see them updated yet with the create it like a boss bitly link and the, uh, direct link to my exploring real estate in Mexico in the Yucatan Peninsula uh, via fitlifecreation.com backslash blog. So a couple things. There is no MLS or comps used officially. I did previously Google like an international MLS. And literally when I put in Cancun or something, I think it listed like six properties. Uh, there is other, you know, types of websites or listings. But again, keep in mind, it's not as developed or as updated or as adhered to like in the United States, anything that you find at all as of yet. Um, and there's no official comps used officially. There's no comps used officially. So as a result, having someone who knows the higher priced markets versus the up and coming markets is essential to help you navigate and negotiate as well as if, for example, if you're looking at a property and it's listed at X price for a listing in an up and coming market. Uh, so let's say you find a property that's listed for 200000 in a market or neighborhood that isn't as accessible, isn't as touristy. And let's say that price is higher than a recent sale in a higher priced market. So let's say in the, like using Merida as an example, 
let's say you look at San Sebastian neighborhood, which is actually where my Airbnb was. And um, the owner, Joe, and I talked about him in the last episode, had just bought the property, I think three, four years ago. He added a, it's colonial home, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, I talk about it a lot in the last uh, episode and it's all over my Instagram. And he added a second floor to the original colonial home. He added within the plot of land two pools. He added a second home that faces a different direction, but literally is almost a duplicate, almost not quite, of the original home along with the second story added to it. So let's say that house had been listed and, you know, the original, just simply the colonial. And let's say in that neighborhood is San Sebastian, which is an up and coming neighborhood. And let's say that one was listed for 200,000. And let's say that one is higher in my example than a recent sale. Let's say a recent sale in a higher price market like Paseo Montejo was um, 175,000. Well, this will help you know that there's leverage to negotiate because then you're going to have 200,000 in an upcoming neighborhood that isn't as nice. And then you have proof from the real estate agent or the listing that it's 175,000 in an up and coming market, which may then want you or have you decide like, let me just go to the up and coming market because it's $25,000 less in that particular example. So then I also learned that no earnest money is involved. Deposits are usually 10%. There is typically no title insurance. This is one of the reasons why financing is not yet available due to perceived risk with financial institutions and or fintech. However, with increasing opportunities, markets, and profits, this may be changing. And this was actually one of the conversations that Neil and I had during the real estate course experience. Um, number five, higher end versus up and coming markets. So I talked a little bit about this, but Merida includes neighborhoods like, you know, Paseo Montejo or clo- neighborhoods close to there, uh, like Santiago, Santa Ana, and Santa Lucia versus I just talked about some of the up and coming markets are markets like San Sebastian. Searching, number six, searching the, for properties. So I shared with Neil my potential property desires and being open, and we visited two properties the day after my real estate course to help me and him get an idea of what I liked, what I didn't like, what I was open to, you know, my potential style as a buyer, as an investor, as a um potential retreat, home creator, co-working space creator. And for me to, the other thing I want to talk about you guys, whether any type of vision you are talking about, that you are taking a step or a leap of faith in an area that is new to you, that you have not navigated, whether it is in this case, real estate, but it could be, you know, finances, it could be love, it could be starting a business, it could be transforming your health, you know, or, and or all of the above, which I've absolutely walked through several of those examples and or am walking through and navigated like, you know, losing over 55 plus pounds seven plus years ago and becoming alcohol free and keeping that weight off. Disclaimer, the average person that uses Herbalife Nutrition loses a half a pound to a pound a week with a healthy, active lifestyle. I use those examples because I constantly remind myself of, you know, successful areas of my life that I have transformed and navigated and what is the common thread? You know, what are the beliefs that changed? What are, you know, what's the feeling that changed? What's the aligned action that changed? What's the time I put in? In that example, I released, you know, I set an intention. I, you know, set a path forward. And then I initially did like a three month type workout plan that was super consistent. I did many things before from triathlons to uh, centuries to half marathons. But then this time with after that three month window, then I set a goal to compete in a bodybuilding show five months after that. So you could see how I kept the timetable very loose. It was like, okay, three months I'm doing this. Okay, five months from now I'm doing this, but then I'm putting in the daily consistent action. And I knew, well, if I don't put in the daily consistent action, my coach might tell me, hey, you're not ready to do a show, right? So let's go take it back to real estate now. With real estate, it's like, okay, oh, this is the intention. This is what I want to do. And I've set a goal of within the next seven years or less, 
I want to do this. Obviously, I'm open to doing it sooner, but then I have other goals that I desire and want and they need to happen first, right? And or maybe not because one of the possibilities I said to Neil is, well, wait a minute, Banna Max Bank underwrites Casa Montejo. I talked about that in the last episode, how Merida does such an incredible job highlighting culture and different things for free all around the city and providing free events for tourists and citizens and residents alike. So I said, well, wait a minute, let me research Banamex, if I'm saying it right, and other underwriting organizations, because I asked him, like, do you have any experience with this? Do you know of anybody? Do you know anybody that's, you know, looking to potentially focus on colonial home restorations or, a, you know, a specific neighborhood in Marina or retreat centers or ways to give back to entrepreneurs? And he didn't, although he's part of different organizations. So I said, you know, definitely if something comes up, let me know and I will look at your listing and I will do some research. But I also let him know that, hey, wait a minute, I'm traveling from Merida to Canada for an Herbalife event. And I'm focused on several things with my business and with Herbalife. And then I'm traveling to Nice. And then I'm traveling to Bulgaria. And then I have several things that I'm working on right now. And I will get to the list next. And then I will get to that research, but it's likely going to be in two to three weeks. And I've stayed true to my word because that experience was on October. My experience with Neil was, I think, October 4th, if I have my dates right. And then I had travel, 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 and then I got sick. And then I recently shared with him this week my top 10 things to do in Merida. And I said, you know, I'm working on this next in the video. So you will be hearing from me soon. And then I will get through the listing, likely the end of this week and or next week. So communicating, right? And staying true to our word and integrity. So because again, there's other things that I'm focusing on. So this is the thing I bring that up, you guys, to say it is okay to have vision and intention and dreams and goals and desires for other things. And it is also great if you dive in internally and say, okay, I this, this, and this is a priority first. However, just, just like I do that with myself, I also recognize the priceless and once in a life opportunity that literally came to me to have a real estate course with an expert in Merida, Mexico while I was there. So hence I did it. So um, I will update the blog post and or share on the show on um, things that I learn later on when I dive into the possible properties. So speaking of properties, property measurements. Another thing I learned from Neil based on what I want to do possibly with properties is with the colonial homes or retreat homes, as well as the Airbnb I was staying in and share that with him. Neil shared about the width and the depth of properties to look at. This included information on a good width being about seven to eight meters versus 10 meters being great. And then 30 to 40 meter feet, 30 to 40 meters deep. Let's talk about foreigners. So I would recommend, and Neil did too, in ensuring you hire an attorney to uh, for documents in English. So I speak fluent Spanish, but not contracts in real estate. So I would definitely, you know, whatever language you speak, you definitely want to be able to fully understand legal um legal documents in, you know, any, in your native language. I was updating my blog post because I realized there was a weird typo. So two types of foreigners. A, you're going to have either a bank trust or what they call a feedy comiso, and 95% use this, allows you to invest in any Mexican property and own it as a beneficiary. Essentially, you have all the rights of real estate ownership while a Mexican bank holds the legal title to it as your trustee. So in that sense, like when he explained it to me, it, you know, is similar to me, like a bank holding the deed to your property because you don't own the property outright. But in this case, if you're investing and you're not financing, you do own it, but then the bank trust allows you to 
invest and own it as the beneficiary. The typical fee is $1,800 to set it up and about $600 annually and may vary based on institution, lawyer, time when you invest, etc. Or depending, you may be, and the property may be a Mexican corporation. Then it may align to a Mexican bank, uh, an accountant with what they call a hacienda, and then you have an accountant that updates, you know, different documents monthly. Then number nine, closing costs. There are at, these are averages and estimates and may vary depending on individual circumstances and or when you listen to this. So typically 1.5% is going to go to the attorney. You're going to have a 3% transfer tax, which, you know, some of this is similar to United States real estate, typically about a total of 9%, which will include the fidi comiso that I just talked about. Prior to negotiation, you may have additional costs of you may want to invest in inspections and get contractor estimates on existing properties to have an idea of any investments in the property. Like I talked about how if I acquire property, I might want to do A, B, or C, and I might want to have a contractor give me an estimate on costs, on timing, on materials. Time to close. Just like anywhere in the world, uh, the time will vary on the property, the intent negotiations to close. A seasoned buyer and or a real estate investor familiar with the city, country, agent, lawyer, and legalities will usually be much faster than a new or inexperienced buyer in any of these areas. I fully anticipate and expect that, you know, while I'll be peaceful and prayerful and calm and whatever happens, I will have questions that I will ask and I will want answered. And especially when things don't align or don't feel right, I don't have clearance from the divine, I will put a stop to things. Uh, Marina, Mexico real estate property tour. To my surprise and delight, Neil offered to take me on a real estate tour of two colonial properties the day after our real estate course in Yucatan. I was leaving Marina, Mexico in two days to travel to Canada for Herbalife Nutrition Leadership Development Weekend and then to Europe. We toured a property in the higher end area close to Paseo Montejo and one in Santiago, an up and coming neighborhood. The first property we saw offered a potential buildup for up to a two-story home with a pool um, it, with an asking price of about $350,000. In comparison, the second property offered a smaller home in the front, which was absolutely rent-ready or livable-ready, a casita, a plot of land, a pool, and ability to build up as well. And the plot of land absolutely allows in that one for a second or third casita. The property was purchased, the second one, about uh, years ago at about 100000 rented out long-term, and listed at about two hundred eighty k. And definitely check out my YouTube video with behind the scenes to get an idea of the properties. Whether you are a multi-passionate entrepreneur, a digital nomad, creator or CEO, or investor interested in real estate in Mexico, expand your mind to the limitless possibilities to create it like a boss anywhere and everywhere in the world. Side note, if this interests you as well, definitely check out my fitlifecreation.com backslash retreats, which I talk about because some of the locations that I have on, uh, on the website are also homes in Merida and we can absolutely align a real estate course in Yucatan experience if a particular group or your private group is interested in that. Share with me on social, tag me at Katrina Julia Fit at Limitless Global Girl. Leave a review on the show. Drop your Instagram handle and your website so I can shout you out. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the 50 plus five star reviews. I am super grateful. And as always, remember create, transform, and inspire. You are born to. Are you ready to take your marketing like a boss? with Black Friday and beyond. Keep listening to Boost Your Black Friday strategy with my fractional CMO and marketing A to Z free quiz. This free quiz will help you identify where you're at with your strategy, your structure, your systems with your marketing, with Black Friday, with monetizing, and so much more. 
When you take the free quiz, I and the team will personally reach out to help you create it with resources. Definitely check out my YouTube video and the video in the show notes at Fractional CMO Like a Boss so that you have me personally walking you through the quiz and insights and downloads. And you can get a free call with me if you are serious about having a fractional CMO work with you one-on-one for Black Friday and beyond to really take your business to the next level. So let's create it. All the food chats on faith, wellness, money, marketing, business, and travel so you create a life if you and business haven't well. already. Head on over to the blog, the podcast, and the freebies to jumpstart your transformation. If you're ready to dive into the online courses, the live events, or the retreat, and if you want to create with our community on an even deeper level, definitely check out our internships, our influencer collaborations, management, and brand engagement. Let's create it.